us in the tent as we all rise to our feet and uh, worship the Lord together this morning. <coughs> Let's say, come by here. E. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Let's say, Savior, hear my humble cry as we worship him this morning. <clears throat> So yes, so yes, so more na yes, so tapi. Thank you, O oh God. May you then. 
something here um, just turn into our Bibles in the book of Psalm chapter 100 uh, they can also project it for us we know that Psalms are the songs so others we know how to sing them others we don't so others we just read as much as we do not know their tunes so I will be reading uh, verse 1 and you are going to read verse 2 I read verse 3, you read verse 4, and then we read verse 5 all together. God bless you. I hope we understand. I read verse 1 of Psalm 100. Can you give it to us, brother? And then the church will read verse 2. I read 3. We read alternatively. And we read verse 5 together. Amen. Yes, so oh yes, so oh yes, yes, so oh Rena. unto the Lord all ye lands. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. For the Lord is good together, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generation. God bless you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand in praise. Amen. Hallelujah. As we say, the day of redemption is near. We see today the events that are unfolding before our eyes, prophecies being made history. So the Lord said, when we see these things coming to pass, we must lift up our heads for the redemption draweth near. Amen. <clears throat> that is key. E. Nations are breaking, Israel's awaking, the signs that the prophets foretold the gentiles days numbered for I encamped eternity soon will unfold oh the day glory to God One 
Jerusalem brings glory, and national life long be through. Today she is calling. this morning oh lord heavenly father thou creator of heavens and the earth the great jehovah who is highly exalted above the highest heavens oh how excellent is your name above all the earth this morning there is no god like you there will never be god like you for there is no god before you and there is no other god after you oh you alone are god oh heavenly father you are great you are mighty, you are holy and you are terrible. We give you praise this morning, Jehovah. We give you the glory, O King of Kings. We bless and praise your holy name. O Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shammah. God Almighty, you are Lord Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. 
the time to play church is over. It is the time to mean business with God. Be filled with the Spirit. Let your limbs be trimmed and clear. Amen. As we say, thou my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me, all along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with you. Amen. You may give it to us, my brother. <coughs> Thou my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me, all along, all along, oh. A worldly pleasure.
bow the hand in praise. We may take down our seat. We may sit down. Now they'll be taking offerings for us as they give us Jisha. And I believe we still remember our building funds that we need to contribute on a monthly basis. So let's not forget so that we may as soon as possible build our tabernacle. God richly bless you. Bishop. When we cross the river Jordan we shall sing the victory song will be greeting one another with a hallelujah song. Heavenly Father, we say thank you once again, O oh Lord God, for this section, O oh mighty Father, whereby we present our tithes and offering unto thee. O oh Lord God, may you accept our humble offerings that we have given unto thee. May you bless the hands that have given, O oh Father, even those, O oh Lord God, that have failed today. May you bless them also, Father, that they may recognize, O oh Jesus Christ, that this is a moment, O oh Father, a section, O oh Lord God, that they cannot miss, that, O oh Father, they can show also for their gratitude unto thee, O oh Father. 
for you are a one that blesses us. May you continue to bless us and lead us in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, believing. Amen and amen. items we dedicate our lives a bright be of good cheer and grace grace god richly bless you mm-hmm. oh
nations arising against nations fearful signs all over the skies and when so
pistas red of all men yes the word is made flesh I gain yes to be from love It's a challenge to accept. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And uh, I'm just going to ask that the musicians and the singers after church, let's come back and uh, have a five minutes meeting. And God richly bless you. Amen. It's a challenge to accept. It's a faith to rise into. Glory to God. I think it's G. Amen. It's a faith to rise into It's a way I can show the world That Jesus Christ is true It's a life to live a testimony blameless Standing every day That this world isn't worthy of Glory to God Deep, deep for Christ In the fall that you've been placed The joy of your life with it Always glowing on your face Living humbly Following the way you show
the ones that's going to stand and keep the testimony clean in the midst of an unbelieving world we'll keep looking to the unseen to really know that we will overcome and receive his promise to on his throne
with our heads bowed in divine presence we believe almighty God is present and available in a world that is filled with controversy in a world that is ripe for judgment in a world that is falling in place to fulfill prophecy in a world where no man cannot help the other politics have failed many religion has failed many we've come to a place where God is the only and final remedy and in such a time as this when people are fearing for their families when people are fearing for their lives where we do not know what tomorrow holds you want a God that knows what tomorrow holds to hold you we see prophecy coming in line with modern events and soon and very soon it won't be long in a moment and in a twinkle of an eye God will come and take his waiting pride away but as the bride are you ready for that final quickening and to the rapture oh there is a door open today to they that are weary they that are heavily laden you are saying Lord I'm backslidden I'm weak and weary I don't know how I can overcome but I pray by your grace that as your word shall come forth let it shake me back into place shake me into position as I come before you today I'm not coming for money I'm not coming for a job I'm not coming for marriage I'm not coming for anything earthly I want the Holy Ghost I need your touch Lord Seal me with your power And bring me to the place I'm supposed to be I see Russia Fearlessly standing in his position I see America
of the world. You are ordained to shine. You are ordained to shine in the midst of darkness. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace in worship and in adoration with the acknowledgement of your supremacy with acknowledgement that you are the highest office of appeal that we are not hungry children you have fed us with spiritual food in due season a storage for the hour of famine when the world is staggering like drunkards you've given us stability amid the storms of life that can rage yes we may not be perfect in the eyes of the world but through your eyes through your blood we stand white as snow for you took our position that we can take your position and that's why today we come with confidence with boldness to obtain mercy in times of need we want to thank you heavenly father that you've instructed us consistently and you're not going to let any one of us whose name is inscribed upon the palm of thine hands to be plucked from you you have promised like Boaz did to Ruth that I will not rest until I bring you at my side. And this promise and seal that you've given us, it's enough, Lord. It's enough to stabilize us. Yes, we, we don't care what the media says. We don't care what the world says. We only care what you say. And your word is the most valuable asset we can ever think of. Your word in us Christ in us the hope of glory is the illumination in the midst of darkness that we require I want to thank you for raising a people in this end time fearfully walking in your footsteps boldly standing upon your promises to undertake that final flight that thou hast promised that in a moment in a twinkle of an eye we will be ruptured out of this place this age this corruption we want to thank you heavenly father that your bride is rising in power in vision and in focus that your people are being shaken into place by your word shaken into place by your truth made free made free by the knowledge of your expectation in what you want done with your word thank you for taking away our shame our fears and our hesitations thank you for taking away our doubts that we can stand oh God empowered by a force from on high we can stand oh God 
four is Mrs. Jesus Christ, most excellent Theophilus. To stand as Mrs. Grace Faith, the embodiment of deity, the final voice in this final age. Dear God, I pray that we may recognize our divine purpose. We may recognize our divine positions. Look at the hands, the hearts that are opened. These are not men coming for worldly things. What will it profit us to gain the whole world and lose our souls? We can see everything else is coming to a place of destruction. What will money give us? What will cars, houses, all them things are vain. But there is something, a pill of great prize. That is what we want to hold on to right now. We cannot trade it for anything. We cannot lose it for anything. But we are holding fast. Making our calling and election sure. As we see the preliminaries of the third who you spoke between the sixth and the seventh trumpet that behold the third war cometh quickly. Say, watch Russia, king of the north, Israel, your type is. And oh God, when we see the preliminaries, we know it won't be long. Because when the final unfolding takes place, the bride will not be upon the land. The bride will be caught up with you in heavenly places. And Lord, as we see this this flashing red lights of your coming. Dear God, it tells us how close we are. It tells us how near we are. And I pray, Father, knowing we cannot calculate you, neither can we manufacture prophecy to be fulfilled. But Father, we know that we know that we are part of this great unfolding. And you are not going to leave us unprepared because the secrets that pertaineth to what will be for this earth will be with the royal seed of Abraham. You spake unto him back in the days, how can I hide to my friend, my servant Abraham, what I'm about to do? You unfolded, you told him that Sodom is ripe. The cup of the Amorites is full and judgment is about to be for the land. Fire and brimstone. And he was able to make intercession with revelation because he knew what God had spoken would not fail. You was persuaded by the truth of a God who has no record of lying or failing that he will not allow his word to return back to him void. And I pray this moment in time that you speak in a special way. As a man, I've got my inspiration, but yours is above my inspiration. As a man of worth, I may intend to say, but you as God, you are above. I pray, O King of all lights, you that is capable to drive away all night, may today be that day on the 27th, thinking about the 28th, dear God, in 63 with one foot upon the land, another upon the sea, you came down, you brought the intelligence, the headship upon a headless bride. You gave us vision. You gave us, you gave us focus. You gave us eyes, ability. And dear God, we are grateful that the same insight that was given, that descended six, in 63 is present here with us. And we are asking, Lord, for your instruction how to behave and how to walk worthy of your vocation. Take away everything humanistic. Take away everything that is flattering. Give us the perfect consciousness that we require. That we may not fall short of your presence and your glory. Where we have sinned, forgive us. Where we have erred as men, we bleed the blood of Christ. We want to stand worthy. We want to stand acceptable, O oh God, even of your love and your grace. Oh, we thank you for the atmosphere, the songs of Zion. We thank you for the hearts that are opened and the day that is ahead of us. We really appreciate your purpose and your plan. May today be that day that we can look back and say, indeed, our eyes of understanding were opened. When the world is terrified, we were established. Knowing the word needs must come to pass. 
and all righteousness ought to be fulfilled. We thank you, precious Lord. We surrender our all in your hands. Take me the preacher, hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Let me not speak of my own. Undertake for me, I'm depending upon you fully. With this jumbled up words, pray that something of value and effect be spoken to you all. We ask it. This blessed morning. In Jesus' name. And everybody say Amen. Let's so give a hand of praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You can do better than that. Give him worship. Give him praise. Give him honor. He deserves the best. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. God richly bless you. Would like to greet you all saints in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How many are pleased to be present today? Praise be to God. Want to salute the invisible audience. We salute those in the tent. God richly bless you. Shall we temporarily take our seats? Um, we we delight to live in such a time as this there can never be any better day that any man would have desired to be expressed into this dimension of time than this day you know it's terrifying to the public but to the bride we receive mercy in an hour of judgment and as God raised the ark of Noah above the judgment and introduced they that were in the ark into a new world. All that are part of the bride will be raised above the judgments of this earth and planted into the new world to walk upon the ashes of the wicked one for a millennium reign with Christ. And that is our hope. That is our faith. And that is the essence of what we do and what we preach. It is all pointing to that great day that after all is said and done, we will be found hearing them words, well done, my beloved servant. Enter ye in the joys that's been prepared for you from the foundations of the world. As the rest of the world who hear the words, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Oh brother, we thank the Lord that it is by grace we stand. It is by his love we overcome. He has ministered to us. Bride, be of good cheer. Fear not their fear. There is a fear that has plagued the world. A fear that is greater and more provocative than COVID-19. A fear that this world can be extinct in the next hour. We've come to the time where the king of the north is unifying his empire. And when we look back, the inspiration and anointing that was upon every detector you take a look at Hitler what made the second world war to come it was his attempt to unify Germany to bring it as a superpower 
And in the process of unifying it, they provoked what they never thought they would provoke. And the world went into the Second World War. And we know the fifth trumpet is the First World War. The sixth trumpet was the Second World War. And the seventh trumpet is the Third World War. And between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet, between the Gentile prophet and the two Jewish prophets, there was a declaration. Behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Or oh, we cannot mince words when it comes to this thing. But that's what we live for. Modern events. Fulfilling what was prophesied. Now we are not presuming when we preach about the end. We are not opportunists. Like the modern Pentecostal preachers. That take advantage of events to create their own fame. We are stable, brother. We know what we've believed. And we know the certainty of what God has declared over our lives. And as it was declared, time shall be no more. We, we know how Armageddon is going to come in. It will start at the gates of Israel. Gog and Magog, which is Russia, the king of the north will try to fight with Israel and she will be defeated Russia will be defeated dismally by that small nation because the Iranians and all them haters around Israel will join up trying to attack that little country but God will give Israel victory because there will be a supernatural intervention Revelation chapter 19 it is the return of the bride in defense to Israel now when I speak this I'm trying to show you the picture that there are things that you're not supposed to wait for because they'll take place in your absence. What you see right now, we call them preliminaries. Why? Because before the fire falls, the bride will be out of this place. So it shows you how close you are. If you're driving to Johannesburg, when you meet the sign Pretoria, you have not yet arrived, but you know there's no way you can arrive at Johannesburg without passing through Pretoria. Then it shows you how near you are. So some of the things we see may not be exactly the fulfillment of what we are preaching, but they tell you how close you are to what is about to take place upon the planet Earth. When they shall say peace, peace, then sudden destruction will befall the land. And make no mistake, you can never calculate God down through the ages, through the minds, even spirit-filled people, they are tempted to calculate these things and they're always found wanting. When it comes to this, it's no longer a collective instruction that will deliver the bride. It is now God in you instructing you as individuals because there's something I can give you as a pastor but there are places I cannot come to where it takes the Holy Ghost himself ministering to you as an individual. Can you say amen to that? And we are coming to that junction of time where the God of the church we will not stand but the God of individuals to say he that dwelleth in me he that liveth in me he that speaketh in me praise be to God he is the one ordering my footsteps and bringing me to the place I'm supposed to stand 
for such a time as this. O bride, be of good cheer. Fear not their fears. It won't be long. It won't be long. But amongst all given to Christ by the Father, none shall be lost. There is a certainty of the sound of the gospel. When a trumpet gives in a certain sound, who will prepare for war? The voice is becoming more certain and our translation more sure. Verified by the Holy Ghost that dwelleth in us. Good morning, believers. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many are happy to be in church? Let's give a hand of praise. Amen and amen. I would like to welcome everybody. We've got a couple of announcements uh, before we come to the word. Um, We've got uh, baptism today. Um, we've got Sister Azina. Azina. That is um, Sister Faith's mom. Faith. Faith. Yes. Um, She's going to be baptized today. I want to ask her to stand. You, you can stand up. Uh, this is Sister Faith's mother. Praise the Lord. Um, and then uh, God richly bless you. You know, these um, seasons that you just say is the grace of God. When people can identify the truth. Because we are closer to the time where the filth will remain filthy. The righteous will remain righteous. So it cannot be effort that can bring a person back to the fold. It cannot be eloquence. You can preach all you want. Only the ordained and the predestined. You know, no matter how much you love certain people, I bet Lot loved the wife so much. But no matter how much you preached to her, she had to turn back and she became a pillar of soul. So what is happening is no longer man's doing. It is God guiding his people. And we certainly appreciate the Lord for that. And then Brother George as well is today, right? Brother George has been with us for some time. Um, we first uh, had contact with him in 2021. 2015. He was still in high school. So he had to study and then there was a, you know, a break where we didn't, you know, fellowship together. He was, uh, I think, studying. But uh, in the midst of that, uh, he had a baptism in the previous denomination he was. <clears throat> so it has dawned to him that he needs to be rebaptized. And he's welcome for that. Now, the prophet tells us that rebaptism is your choice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's a sister who asked Brother Brian and he said, you know, I want to be baptized again. She was baptized in the message, but she just wanted another baptism. And Brabham says, there's no problem if you want to, though you don't need to be rebaptized. But if there's something that stands between you and God, just remove it. You get the point. So we thank the Lord so much. So we're going to baptize two people today. We give a hand of praise. And um, today is a very special day because 
today, six years ago, I got married. Eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, actually, it's my anniversary, the sixth year anniversary. Though I met my wife about uh, 11 years ago, if everything had happened according to our plans, it was going to be our 10th year anniversary. But something stood between our marriage for four good years. We had to wait and pray until it was almost an impossibility. You know, love, I know it when I see it. You know, I never thought I could fast for 50 days, you know, for love. <laughs> you know, together with my wife, I think we did it more than twice. Things were not working, brothers. <laughs> we tried all we could, but nothing could work. Though we were distance apart, she was praying and fasting where she was. I was praying and fasting where I was. You know, until God revealed to us that our answer was right before us. And when we found our answer, we embraced it. And after four years of prayer, of waiting, and trusting God, He came and He proved that He cannot fail and He keeps His word. Now, some of these experiences, they are there for you. You know, there are times you as a congregant, you feel like giving up on certain things. You try your best and it seems like God is silent and he can't hear you. Abraham, it was 25 years waiting for a promise. Then you begin to see you only need to be faithful and wait upon him and in due season you make all things beautiful. Now, everybody is not going to get answers the same way. Our challenges and paths of life are different. And ability to recognize your uniqueness in God's economy it's a divine stronghold that will make you stand the test of time. Because we are not going to marry the same age. We are not going to be proposed the same time. You, you get the point. Some are ordained to marry early. Others a bit late. But still the same God. As long as you are faithful and you do all that is expected of you, God will come in his own way. And above all, our uniqueness as well not every woman will be the same. Your wife and my wife, they're different. Somebody's husband and your husband, they're different. And it's important as well as the bride to realize those things. Because there are people that can be fighting with their husbands, not because they are problems, but because they're trying to look for another man in their husband. There are people that are fighting with their wife. Not because the wife is bad, but the man in his mind, he thinks, you know, a perfect woman must be like that woman. We are born different. We are designed different. And our compatibility we will never be the same. What pleases this man will not please the other man. That's why the best thing to do as the bride and as a believer is to be the truest version of yourself and let whoever that can be attracted be attracted by that. 
But if you want to impersonate, you're going to make a home that is not right. Because a man or a woman will marry you not for who you are, but for what you're trying to portray. And you're not only robbing yourself, you're robbing the other person. Can, can you say amen to that? And when you understand all these things, you're going to be happy in marriage and happy to be married with the person that God has ordained for your life. I really thank God for these six years, you know. It, it was, it's been a blessing, you know, to share these years with my, my wife I always tell her if I'll be given another chance to choose a wife I'll still choose her without thinking twice you know just the thought of living without her it brings shivers into my body just an imagination to say let's say she's not there because you know God designs people from the foundation of the world and I don't have any doubt that before I was even born God designed the path of my life and her life and prepared her nature to come and blend to mine undoubtedly. And for that reason, you can't impersonate that. And no man can give you that. It's from the foundation of the world. And I thank God for that. And um, I, I hear that um, you, you guys, you've got... Uh, a small celebration for a few minutes, eh? I, I was told by the deacons. So, I'm not going to talk much about, you know, my marriage now. Because you're going to, I, I hear that you want to cut a cake or something. We appreciate that. So, I, I was going to call her if it was not that, eh? So, so that she stands here with me as I say these words but I'm sure after service she's going to come up front by the grace of God and I thank you for your support and well wishes actually today you know who dressed us me and my wife you'll see her when she comes eh? we were dressed by the media team eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, um, we, we just got a call yesterday <laughs> by the media team. And um, it's like this year they are just inspired, you know. Because me and my wife, we said, you know, this anniversary, we want it different. So they say, Pastor, please come with mom. Uh, we want you to fit on some clothes. <laughs> it's your anniversary tomorrow. It was a sweet thing. And I know you are representing everybody by the grace of God. Let's clap hands for yourselves. <laughs> we, we really appreciate you. Eh? And um, we are very happy. So, you know, without wasting much time, we'll talk. Eh? We want to come to the business of the day. You know, February is more like a month of love for us. We've got so many events that follow one another. So my wife was begging to say, you know, why don't we just go away, you know, so that people won't be too much, you know, you know, expecting and trying to do so many things for us. Because my anniversary is today. On the 5th is my birthday, which is next week. Eh? And then on the, um, in April, the 14th is her birthday. So many times, it, it, it's, a, it's just everything is squeezed in one season. So she'll be like, if we can just escape, you know, and then we come back, you know, and then we just say, praise God. But we really thank the Lord and may God richly bless you. And then last um, Sunday, you know, we were having the engagement. Is that right? 
It's last Sunday, right? Yes, and uh, we had a good time. It was more like an evangelical sermon that I preached. And um, because we're having visitors, and then we had a good time when we saw the two um, uh, engaging, Brother Ambani and Sister Sandra, and I'm sure um, everybody is happy for them and you're praying for them. But as I was preaching, I recognized that the depth with which I wanted to bring whatever the Lord had put upon my heart was kind of hampered. It was limited. And I thought it's important that I take you a little further so that you grasp exactly what we're trying to bring as divine expressions in in, in this hour that we're living in. How many think that would be wonderful if we can continue a little on that? So we are going to have it like that. I was preaching on marriage and spirituality, wisdom, experience, and maturity. And I think this is the time we really need to understand these things. We're preaching on Romans chapter 7, is that right? And then Acts chapter 15, the prophecy for the bride, for the church in the last day. Though the language was of marriage, Brother Branham says, I don't think this was limited to marriage. Is declaring the signs of the time. And we're able to see the infiltration of the wicked one within message circles. And we're going to go beyond and unpack and identify the enemy and what God's plan is over your life. Because it's a mystery that's hidden in marital matters. That's how God speaks. He just hides things before the people. You can pass it a million miles when it's with you. you. Remember, Pilate, he asked Christ, what is truth? But truth was standing right in front of him. But it was wrapped in simplicity. And he couldn't identify. And there are many things in this age that are standing right before us. Yet people fast, they pray, they seek for answers. And they still cannot grasp. But it's simplified to the simple and the humble. That's why Christ said, I thank you, Father, for you have hidden it from the eyes of the wise and prudent. But thou hast revealed it unto babes such as would learn. And we believe this is the time that all these things must be declared. May the Lord bless you. We want to welcome Brother Amos Mamombe. I'm going to ask him to stand that we acknowledge him. God bless you, Brother Amos. Brother Amos and Brother Lawrence, they are brothers. And they are also siblings to Brother Mamombe. I'm sure you know Brother and Sister Mamombe. So it's, it's a family by the grace of God. We're happy to have you in service. God richly bless you. God bless you, beloved. Good to see you. Everybody else, God richly bless you. Amen and amen. So today I would ask us to rise to our feet by the grace of God. Um, I'm preaching on the same subject, but this will be part two. Marriage and spirituality. Is that right? And um, wisdom, experience, and maturity. And then we 
want to read Revelation 10, verse 1, and then we want to also come to Daniel, uh, chapter 7. Now, I want you to watch this language. Maybe let's pray. Our king, we thank you once more. You know we cannot help one another except by your spirit. Come in right now and inspire every word and establish every believer that we may be able to perceive that which is in our midst in this world and what's about to take place. We ask for your grace, precious Lord, that you may equip, establish, and instruct us that we can be able to stand acceptable and worthy of this vocation we, wherewith we've been called. We're surrendering the reading of your word. Open the bread, the word, and break the bread of life for your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name, and we all say amen. Praise God. Now, let's start with Daniel chapter 7. And we put another finger on Revelation 10, uh, verse 1. Now Daniel, John, and William Branham were carriers of end-time truth. And their revelation was one, but God would always give a feather revelation or a further knowledge or a little more information to qualify and you know make it clearer so when you read them prophecy you must know that they are not introducing anything new they are only adding more light on the same truth that it becomes clearer to you. And in this end time, we have received the clearest version of end time events. That's why we speak boldly. Because through Malachi 4, the opening of the seven seals, there is nothing that was left without being given to us. All mysteries were revealed and were made known. Now, Daniel says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and his hair of his head like the pure wool. This throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, and you're reading verses 9. Then the Chico Rabelessa, Havia, Abe was the Tulu, Atura Wakare, Wamatuba, Gova Yahweh over Ichena, Wungamahata, Mawuzi Awe over Achinga, Wukuse, Wuchena, Kurunoni Yahweh over Ichinga, Kawu Zamiriro, Ina, Miringa, Itukao Muri. Now, you know, we know the word ancient, it means advanced. It means advanced. Aged. Old. Is that right? And yet, um, when he is called the ancient of days, we get further clarity by the characteristics of his being. That the hair of his head was like pure wool and his throne like a fairy flame. Now any ordinary theologian would define this maybe as Christ's glorified state you define this as Christ glorified state. Is that right? Or maybe advanced in years. But now 
when we come to Revelation 10.1, we see the same picture that the Bible says and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face were as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. Now, you observe, we heard about hair white as womb, but now it is spoken of as a cloud. Are we together? It's a cloud. Now, Revelation chapter 1, Okay, before we come to one, verse two then says, And he had in his hand a little book, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his right foot upon the earth. So we've got white as wool. And then here, further light is given that it's actually a cloud. Now, when you come to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, joining all these scriptures, joining all these scriptures, we begin to see what happened in 63. When a constellation of seven angels came at the opening of the seventh seal, and at their ascension, or their dissension, they formed the face of Christ. And that face was covered with a cloud. The hair. And William Branham says, this is exactly what Daniel saw. What John wrote about. He is the ancient of days. But it doesn't mean that he is an old God. Because God is eternal. He cannot be young. He cannot be old. He is eternal. But the whiteness of the hair displayed by the coming of the cloud is an expression of wisdom, experience, and maturity in judgment. That the Lord, who was once a lamb, is coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah, as the king. He is alright. And that God is coming with wisdom, experience, and maturity. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Let's take our seat. Marriage and spirituality. No doubt, Christ and the bride are an indication of our marriages in life. That's why you find you can never understand God outside marriage. Which answers the question of the theologians that how did Paul of Tarsus know much about marriage when he was not married. It is because he knew marriage through Christ and the bride. You understand that? Because that is the clearest version of what marriage ought to be. Adam and Eve in Eden were a resemblance of Christ and his bride. That God before time as El El Elohim the self-existing one covering space, time and eternity he had attributes 
Yet a wife. And that wife of God was in him. In other words, God was trying to tell us a story of what happened when he was alone through Adam and Eve. When you are looking at Adam, an amateur God, a direct descendant from God, his experience and characteristics who tell you the unseen, the unwritten, and the unspoken. That Adam was lonely. He looked around creation. He couldn't find a helper meet for him. Up until he was taken into a deep sleep. And he recognized that his solution was actually in him. Because out of him, Eve came, and she was born of his born, flesh of his flesh, and she was called woman, a wombed man, Adam in another body, the same Adam that was in a body, and body that is both male and female, he extended himself and he was put in another body by the same Adam. Water in this cup is a writer, but then this water is not satisfied. We take another cup. We pour this water. Now what is this? It is this water in another cup. Same water, but in another cup. So this is Adam, and this is Eve. Eve is the Adam in another body. Is that right? Now that's the picture of God. The wife of God, the bride, it is God in another body. The same God, he poured himself into Christ. And all that was in Christ was poured into the church. So you must know who the bride is. She is Christ in another body. Now, now, when we speak about the spirituality of marriage, that's why God says, even when he speaks about ministry, that a man must be able to govern his home well. Because there has to be a continuity in your marriage life and the marriage of Christ and his church. And if there is discontinuity, it defeats the purpose that we are trying to reflect. Because when we step into marriage, we are impersonating Christ. I can never be a good husband outside being what Christ is. You can never be a good wife outside being what the true bride of Christ is. So, we take our notes from God. You know, the way as a man you would want to treat your wife is the same way you require God to treat you. In other words, if you Love your wife. You expect God to love you. If you are patient with your wife, you expect God to be patient with you. Because the language you give God about your life and how you want to be treated, you display it in marriage the way you treat your wife. If your wife can never be forgiven, if she keeps condemnation for years, for months, for weeks, for days, you are simply saying to God, even if I sin, I need man before you forgive me. Are, are you getting it? There is a oneness you cannot separate. That's why the prophet in the spoken word oneness, said there was no way Adam and Eve could be one with one another outside their oneness with God. When they broke the oneness with God, 
They could not be one together. Is that right? So it's a lie. It's a lie to claim love outside God. Outside God, we can have sympathy. Not love. Outside God, we can have emotions. Not love. Outside God, we can have lust. Not love. Nobody can talk about love without talking about God. So whatever they say is love out there. Yes, it can make them shed a tear because of their sympathetic nature. Empathy. But they can still go to hell with empathy. I'm sure you've seen people that easily cry and then you start to feel for them. It's not love, that thing. It's feeling. It's in the dimension of the body and the spirit. It's not in the soul. <laughs> Actually, sympathy is doing the will of God. Jesus Christ, when he came, he saw many people at the pool of Bethsaida. Very sick. But he chose one in the midst of plenty. And people say with all the power, why did he leave that one? That one is about to die. He chose only that one. And he said, the son can do nothing except what he sees the father doing. So does he do likewise? And the prophet says, Sympathy is beyond emotions, actually. It's doing the will of God. No man is more careful than God or more sympathetic than God. The moment you do that, you are trying to do God a service without it being his will. You think God did not know Moses was a stammerer? He knew but he wanted it that way. You think God does not know about that beggar in the street? Born without parents. You think he doesn't know? He knows about it. In other words, when you try to be more sympathetic than God, you carry the mark of the Antichrist. Many philanthropists to be in hell. When you talk about philanthropists, these are people that give to the poor. We call them philanthropists. Many of them will be in hell. But you ask yourself, but they were giving to the poor. No one can be more sympathetic than God. I mean, think of it. God knows what he's doing. Lucifer was trying to be more understanding than God. More brighter than God. The reason why he became Satan, he was trying to better the kingdom of God. So you can better the system of God. God knows why things are the way they are. And you as a believer, you only need to say, thy will be done. And be it unto me according to your word. How many widows were there in the time of Elijah? It was not feelings that led it to Zarephath. To say he was sitting down and say, hey, that widow is struggling, you know. Let me, let me just go by. There were many more widows struggling, even more than that one. But he went there by divine instruction. It's not about your feelings. It's not about your thinking. It's the plan that God had 
before the foundation of the world. And humility is submitting yourself under that despite how you feel, despite what you see, despite how you think. We call that humility. Can I get a true amen? There are people that don't have jobs and God doesn't want you to help them. There are people that don't have money and God doesn't want you to give them money. And if he wants you to give that person money, you do it. And even if you don't want to give that person money, somebody else will. If you want that person to have a job, you give that person a job. Even if you deny him a job, somebody else will give that person a job. Are you understanding this? So God is sovereign and we need to trust in his plan. Now when it comes to marriage, praise be to God. Paul says, he spoke about, you know, the death of the law and the death of a spouse. Is that right? And he says, the head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is the man. Now, you begin to see the transmission of language. The transmission of mystery in a marriage relationship. You want to know Christ, look at the bride. You want to know a man, look at the wife. You want to know the children, look at the mother. You, 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 you get that line. It can be any other. You, you, you find that a woman is a vessel that vents out or channels what the man is to the children. And this happens automatically, quietly. You find a man that is having a certain nature and then he doesn't even talk to the children. But you find the children exactly like that man. It is because whatever he exerts to the wife, the wife carries it to the children. If he comes, he slaps the wife without any reason. Don't think it ends there. The wife also will go and slap the children without any reason. So the wife transfers your slap to your children. Your anger to the children. Your dishonesty to the children. Your character is transferred to your children by the wife. And eventually, like father, like son, no talking to the child, but it's a channel that carries information, that carries spirituality. Now, Brother Branham then says, I don't care what a man says, he is what the wife is. No matter how much he markets himself, I'm an honest man, I love the Lord. He said, don't listen to that. Look at the wife. She's the one telling the truth. The man is a liar. I mean, can you trust the ground or the seed? God said, this is mango. This is mango. But you are seeing an orange. If this is mango. I tell you, this is mango. No matter how the ground speaks, we shall know the fruit, the tree, by the fruit. So the wife is the fruit of the husband. The bride, the fruit of Christ. Eve, the fruit of Adam. You get the sense? So you know Adam through Eve. You know Christ through the bride. We know you through your wife. 
So the spirituality now is in this hour. The church of God, the true church of God, is not the one that claims, but is the one that displays the nature of Christ. A shadow cannot lie. Imagine a car passing, but there comes a shadow of a cow. <laughs> Something is wrong. Or oh, an elephant is moving, and you see the shadow of an end. Something is wrong. A shadow cannot lie. Now, you, you, you understand something very mysterious when we speak about the progression of the mystery of marriage that your understanding of the message cannot be separated from your marriage. You can claim to know the seventh seal the COD, and everything that Brother Branham spoke. But your marriage tells a better story whether you really believe this message or not. Can I bring that back again? All right. We learned. William Branham said, if ever I'm given a chance, I want the last 25 years of my life because I will know better how to walk, how to behave, and how to react. I'll have wisdom. I'll have experience. And I'll be mature. And he was talking about the end time age that we're living in. Are we together, friends? And we know it is the progression from Ephesus to Laodicea. The light became brighter. And we could see things clearly. That's why the marriage in the time of Luther can never outsmart a marriage in this end time, the bride age. Whenever it happens, it means you are out of Egypt, but Egypt is still in you. You left denomination, but denomination is still in you. You left the Lutherans, but Lutheranism is in you. Because you can still be a Wesleyan in the message church. Because a message church is just walls and people putting on uniform, long dresses, natural hair. You, you, you get the point. But the real expression of what we have believed is displayed in a life, not in speech or a uniform. Now observe, the nature of your marriage is the clear sign of the depth of your understanding of this message and God. That's why you find in every dispensation, in every governance, or place of authority, the first lady, the first lady, who always influence all the ladies. In the time of Esther, Vashti was divorced because the fear of all men were if she is the wife of Ahasuerus and she behaves like this, it means all other women are going to follow suit. Is that right? In the time of Israel, when Jezebel became the wife of Ahab, her lifestyle influenced every other woman. In the time of John F. Kennedy, the wife of Kennedy, her hairstyles, bobbed hair, influenced the whole of America. I'm sure you hear Brother Barnum rebuking John F. Kennedy's wife. Now, now, this is scriptural. So that's why you find when you come to the office of a pastor, the office of a deacon, there has to be the wife involved. You can't just say, ah, my wife is her own business. Myself, I love God. I worship God. 
I don't care what she does. You are not honest with the word. You can't just say, I don't care what she does. Because you are not going to have an answer for you. You answer for her. Is that right? Who will answer for us? Christ. And his blood. You stand for us. So every man will answer for the wife. So you, you begin to see that there's an influence that is undeniable when you talk about marriage and spirituality. In every form of governance, there's an influence that is secreted. That's why William Barnum says if you want to know the stage and maturity of a church, you look at the women in that church because the women are a type of the church. You see, marriage and spirituality. Can you say amen? That's why you know when a man comes to a time of marriage, if you're a young man, you know, it's not a thing you play with. You, you, you cannot play with marriage until you, you look for a wife on Facebook or on WhatsApp or on social media. You know what I'm talking about. Because when you look for a wife on Facebook, it's called what? Facebook. So you're looking for the faith. Not the character. How will I know a woman from a picture? Ah, Pastor, she's got character. How do you know? Ah, she's a very good woman. How do you know? Because you saw a long dress. Muslims, they wear longer dresses. Red sisters are worse. So it means they're all good. Marriage and spirituality. God has to inspire a young man. Because a young man can ruin his entire life when he makes a wrong decision there. I always preached when I was a bachelor that God, actually it's a court. Brother Branham says, the devil, if he doesn't catch you anyway, you know where you'll find you. Marriage. You can preach. You can sing. You can testify door to door. But where a man dies, or where a woman dies, is at the door of marriage. And today as we speak, people are wanting to be honest. If we give them a chance to choose wives and husbands, 90% will take different ones. Don't raise your hand. You know it in your heart. Just if you close your eyes and you say, Lord, if I choose another husband, will I take this one? If I choose another wife, will I take another one? You see? If through marriage, you can destroy your life. But this is what I want to say as your pastor. If you're a young man, you don't play with this decision. Your emotions must never be stronger than the will of God. Your feelings must not lead you. Take the word. Let the word guide you. If you are a young man, if you're a young woman, don't compromise when it comes to marriage. You, you see divorces it's because a young girl ignores the red light or a young man ignores the red light when you are in courtship it is a preview of your marriage but emotions sometimes they can wrap you up until you ignore certain things that you face in marriage where there is no door out. When 
When we speak about courtship, you must understand what courtship is. Marriage is spiritual. You get the point. But people can make mistakes. You know where people have failed, especially right in this message. They accept that a mistake can be made when you are driving. A mistake can be made when you are walking, you sleep and you fall. A mistake can be made when you are at school. But there is a demon that has lied to legalists and message religion people. That when it comes to marriage, you can never make a mistake. If you make a mistake in simple things, why do you think you can't make a mistake when it comes to marriage? That's why we talk about courtship. Now, courtship is where Brother Branham says if you marry that girl and you know she's not fit to be your wife, it's your fault. If you marry that man and you know he's not fit to be your husband, it's your fault. How will you know that he's not fit? Courtship. You want to start to see a vision when you are marrying, but you never saw a vision when you were born. You have never dreamt a dream in your whole life, but today you want to be led by a dream. To say, this is my wife. If that says the Lord, you are deceiving yourself. There is something spiritual and we must teach our children that they may not make the mistakes that we have made. Now here is today that wants to change their wives or husband. Let me tell you something. If you feel that you choose another woman or you choose another man, listen to me carefully. You are being inspired by the devil. Because it's not going to be possible. When you realize things are not the way you expected them, she's not the way you thought, he's not the way you thought, what do you do? Do you look for another one? You say, all things work together for good. That's where that scripture applies now. <laughs> the stubbornness of this woman. God is teaching me patience. All things work together for. No, no, you, you see what we are talking about. You don't look for another one. You see the good in that. The, this, the way this man beats me. Hey. Hey. I can look back and see. Ah, the way I didn't respect my own father. Maybe I'm paying for that. But God, give me strength. Oh yes! When David was painted, spate on, his soldier wanted to kill. David said, don't do that. I know what I did in the past. I'm reaping what I've sown. So there are ways you can look at life other than divorce. Other than looking for another woman or another man, you see good in your present stage. You compromise where you need to compromise. When you find conflict, it's a product of two people that cannot humble themselves. If your wife cannot humble herself, you humble yourself. If your husband cannot humble himself, you humble yourself and you get peace. And when peace ensues, then you talk reason. But if you say, I'm right, sometimes being right will never bring peace in your home. There are times you have to accept to humble yourself even though you are right for the sake of love and peace. 
But if everybody wants to prove a point, things will break. Can I talk to you? You know, when you talk about the marriage and spirituality, you know, there are people that may think, you know, Pastor, I'm very, I've been in marriage for 50 years. I know the ins and outs. I'm sorry to say you are deceiving yourself. Because that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about goes beyond your natural age. The experience you got with time is nothing compared to the experience that the devil has. What is 50 years against 6,000 years? I can't say, ah, oh, this is my 70 years anniversary. We know these things. The devil will be saying it's my 6,000 year anniversary. Then what is 60 years? So you see, you need more than your experience to overcome. Listen to what Brother Branham says. By the grace of God. Are we moving together, friends? Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the first quotation, brother. Um, Pegamin Church Age. Brother Branham says, he was commenting on Revelation chapter 2, verse 15. So thou hast, thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. God hates this thing. You understand what it is. And if you are a man, you must listen attentively. God hates this. He says, you recall that I brought out you recall that I brought out in the Ephesian age that the word Nicolaitan comes from the two Greek words Nikao, which means to conquer and Lao, which means the lady. Nicolaitan means to conquer the lady. Now, why is this such a terrible thing? It is a terrible because God has never placed this church in the hands of an elected leadership which comes from political mindedness. He has placed this church in the care of God ordained. Spirit filled, word living men who lead the people through feeding them the word. He has not separated people into classes so that the masses are led by a holy priesthood. It is true that the leadership must be holy, but then so must the whole congregation. You see, Nicolaitism, it's a misplaced one-man's ministry. You get the point. When you speak about a one-man's ministry, it's Christ, it's Moses, it's William Branham. Outside that, it becomes Nicolaitism. There are only three men we are ordained to operate under a one man's ministry. It was Moses, it was Jesus, and William Branham. Outside that, wherever you see a one man's ministry, God hates it. He calls it Nicolaitism. There is no one man that can claim to be the channel through which God speaks to the people in this era except William Branham. Branham. 
I don't care if you prophesy. I don't care how many vindications you have. It is outside God's continuity. Now, this is marriage and spirituality. Are you catching what I'm saying here? God wants every man to understand this. He says, the leadership must be holy. But also the whole congregation. You see the point? Everybody must be holy. Was Stephen a pastor? No. But he had a relationship with God. Was Philip a pastor? No. Priscilla and Aquila? No. You see the point? Every man has a responsibility. Further, there is no place in the world where priests or ministers or such mediate between God and the people. No, is there a place where they are separated in their worship of the Lord? God wants all to love and serve Him together. I like that. How many are hearing this? Nicolaitism destroys those precepts and instead separates the ministers from the people and makes the leaders overlords instead of servants. Separates ministers from the people and makes the leaders overlords instead of servants. Are you hearing this language? The Nicolaitism. Now, this spirit, it runs through churches. It runs through families. Is it right? And God hates it. No matter where it is. Praise God. The bride has a ministry. The wife has a ministry. It's very sad, actually. Because the truth of it is, the way you hear the word is the way you run your home. The pulpit influences the families. The way God influences me influences the church. And the way you hear the word tells a lot. Can you say amen to that? How here is thou? Praise God. He says, Now, this doctrine actually started as a deed in the first age. No, as a deed. A deed. Yes, Sanito. Sanito. It was a small thing. It wasn't a big thing. Yeah. Hey. These things, they don't start big. At high school, young men, the way you treat girls, that's the way it starts. You're just rough with women. And then you say to this one, I love you. You sleep with that one. And then you talk to that one. And you've got seven girlfriends. It starts as a deed, isn't it? A small thing. But when you get married, the same principle flourishes in your life and in your marriage. The way, sister, you talk to your own father, your own mother. If I see a woman that doesn't respect their father, I'm 100% sure that woman will never be able to respect their husband. And it's important as a boy to look at a girl beyond church, beyond her dressing, her relationship with her parents has a lot to tell with how she'll behave in a home. 
And if you want to shoot yourself on the foot, you come complaining. Hey, my date is difficult. My mom is not fair. So, ah, don't worry, don't worry. All will be well. Ah, don't worry, all will be well. And you are comforting a serpent. You tell them. No, you must listen to your dad. Listen to your mom. But when you perpetuate that spirit, it will dominate you in the home. And you are the one that has preserved it in that girl by not showing it. You see, 90% of the people who have problems in marriages is because of that. Yes. Your, your, your wife would come and complain about the father and you supported her. Your wife would come and cry, complaining about the pastor. The pastor did this and he said, oh, how can the pastor do this? <laughs> now she's doing unto you what she did to the pastor and to the father. You are reaping what you saw. Instead, you're supposed to rebuild the spirit. That's not how you speak against. You don't speak against authority. David was wronged by Saul. But his loyalty told him better. I cannot touch the anointed one. You, you get the point? So you, you must bring and cultivate those things. As they come, you don't hug and say it's all right. And you even call the pastor. Say, How can you talk to my fiance like that? <laughs> After a few years, you'll be calling the pastor. I'm going to shoot her. Why do you want to shoot her, brother? She did this, this, and that. Ah, brother. That's exactly what you were doing. That time she was doing the same to me. I overcame. Overcome, brother. You supported her when she did that. And it's not her fault as a woman to do that. She's a weaker vessel. That's why a man must be there to help her. To say, sister, that's not the way. She's not evil, but she just needs to be directed. That there are better ways to walk, sister. Can you say amen? You know, Pastoral work could have been difficult, you know, if this principle was not there. Ever since God revealed this to me, I felt free as a pastor. I don't hunt for spies anymore. I don't hunt for spies. <laughs> or look for snakes in the house. Huh? If it's there and it's hidden, leave it. Let it stay there. Ah, brother. If you want to look for all the... The brother's got a snake here. <laughs> if you look for... You'll find things. You want to check what is under this carpet. <laughs> you'll see things. There are things you just have to leave. Jesus left Judas there. He left him. You think if Jesus wanted to look for Judas, <laughs> the Bible would not be what it is. Every service you'll be saying there is a serpent. There is a traitor here. There is a person who wants to kill me. There are persons who are planning. Every sermon will be talking about the Judas. But he didn't do that. He let him be. Yeah. Our brother, we need Judas here. And you must greet Judas and say, God bless you, brother. And you smile, lying, and even kiss you like a Judas kiss, knowing in his heart that he's filled with the hatred. But you, you say, God bless you, brother Judy. <laughs> you don't look for everything. So it makes life easy, brother. I tell you, as a pastor, you can live even much more years if you, if you forget about Judas. And you know how God made me to not worry. They don't worry about any man. Whatever he does to you in public and in private, the wife will pay back for you, my son. 
What a nugget, brother. <laughs> eh? I don't worry. I don't worry. I don't revenge. I'll say thank you, brother. You punch me, eh? Say, thank you, brother. <laughs> I give you the other side. Eh? When you go home, <laughs> your wife will hold you and punch you also. It's the principle, it's the spirituality of marriage. You doubt me, I don't care. Your wife will doubt you also. You beg bite me, I don't care. Your wife will beg bite you also. You despise me, I don't care. Your wife will despise you with the neighbor. That's God for you. You see, marriage is spiritual. These things, they connect. Can you say amen? Mm. Hey. I'm sure you've seen women now in this age. They want more than human rights. They claim that they are being abused. That's how the church is feeling. The church wants more rights than the word. The church wants to lead the word, not the way to lead them. The church claims that God is abusive. Marriage and spirituality, these things are intertwined, they're connected. When they say homosexuality, lesbianism, they're trying to say the laws of God are too difficult. All right. Let's not hunt snakes. Eh? You change the course of the ministry. You change the course of the ministry. Which is that there, brother? You know that. Which is that there? Everywhere. Everywhere they are there. Maybe they are there. And we can look for them if you want. But what will it help us? To know that there is a witch and there is... Let's move on. Hmm. As long as they don't affect witches are there. Sangumas are there. And people that will, in the night, witches, that will even go and speak and say, you never be married, you what, what? You must get in an accident. There are there people like that. But should we care about them? Your enemy has got his own problem. <laughs> so that witch also has got their own problem. They are more than what? Just leave them. They are having enough suffering than so leave her alone. She's suffering more than you, a witch. More than you. So if you're a witch, you must repent. <laughs> yes. Hey. By yourself. I mean. And we're not going to hunt. Say, come, let me lay hands. And then demon starts to expose you. That's not delivering. You are being exposed. When a spirit starts to manifest and expose you, you are not coming to confess. You are being discovered. All right. Are we moving together? Now, this doctrine actually started as a deed in the first age. It was a deed. It appears that the problem lay in two words. You see the words that brought the problem. It is the word that brings problems today. In marriage. Listen to the word. Elders. Presbyters. And overseers. Bishops. Is it? Those are the words that brought the problem. But ah, like I said, this is beyond your natural age. Because even if you live a hundred, a thousand years, like, like that man in Genesis, you can never overcome by your earthly experience. Never. He says, those scripture shows that there are several elders in each church. Some began Ignatius among them. 
to teach that the idea of a bishop was one of preeminence or authority and control over the elders. Are you hearing that? Now, any church that is led by a pastor who receives instruction from another authority, that church is not of God. When a man stands as a pastor, it's a sign that they have direct communication with God. And when that man doesn't have that connection, you need another man to tell him what God is saying to the people he's leading. And I don't want to be led by a man like that. What if the man that tells him dies? What happens to us as the church? So those are the things you look at when you choose a wife, when you choose a church, you look at them things. I mean, this is marriage and spirituality. When you come to say, I'm under this assembly, you, you don't just look at Facebook and say, that's it. You study the character of the church. You must understand the influence of the church. Because when you choose the church, it's going to mold your marriage. It's going to mold your children. Your children will be a product of the influence of the church you choose. Marriage and spirituality. Now, now, you see what I'm talking about? It's not just, ah, that one is the close one. Let me go to that one. So you just married the sister who sits next to you. She's the closest. Every time in church, that one is the one I see closest. So will you marry me, sister? It doesn't happen like that. A man must pray when you choose a wife. Even when you choose a church, it takes prayer. Back in the days, I used to worry. And I asked myself, how can a person drive and they pass a church there and they go to a church there? Are we, are we not all in the message? Are we not one in the message? You know, if you don't have insight, you can feel like that. But your wife is not the closest person you find. It's a love relationship. It doesn't mean you cannot visit other churches. But when you are under an assembly, it's a relationship synonymous to marriage. You're accepting influence. So it's possible that a person can drive past through this place to go to this place. Because love is not about distance. It's character, it's a connection. Oh, not getting an amen here. So it means if your conviction is not like that with us, you are a passerby. One day we'll say bye bye to you. Because you're not in a relationship. Can somebody say amen? amen. So, now, they introduced that there has to be a bishop above elders, which was an unscriptural principle. We've got the fivefold ministry. Is that right? It perfects the church. Is that right? But we don't have bishops, meaning people that lead the fivefold ministers. That's when Nicolaitism comes. All right. Are you getting it? Though the scripture shows that there are several elders in each church. Okay, we, we read that. Now, the truth of the matter is the word elder signifies who the person is. While the word bishop signifies the same man. So there's no need to separate these words. Elder signifies the person. And the word bishop 
Mbishop is the office. Ndiwi. So bishop does not mean a man above elders. Mbishop is a man But a bishop Mbishopo is an elder Mbishopo who has an office of a pastor. This is what I'm reading. Eh? Yeah, you can even call me bishop. Yeah, yeah, bishop. God bless you, bishop. Bishop, bishop. Don't do that. Eh? But it's scriptural. <laughs> it's there. I've read it, isn't it? Okay, let's read it again, maybe. The truth of the matter is the word elder signifies who the person is. I am an elder. Is that right? While the word bishop signifies the office of the same man. Making sense? Now listen to it. The elder is the man. Bishop is the office of the man. And the elder always and always we will refer simply to man's chronological age in the Lord. He is an elder not because he is elected or ordained, etc. But because he is older, he is more seasoned, trained, not a novice, reliable because of experience and long standing proof of his Christian experience. I can I get a big amen here? Uh, uh, let's get a big amen here. Are you hearing what this is saying? If I didn't receive this message and I get to 90 years old, I can't be called an elder in the message. That's what it's saying. Now, now you be the chronological age in the Lord. Now you understand wisdom, experience, and maturity. Now it's connected to the white hair. What makes me instruct this generation as a pastor under the influence of Malachi 4 is not because of my natural age. No! If the mind that was in Christ in me, then it qualifies me to stand and talk about Russia, to stand and preach about America. What gives me that authority is I'm carrying the mind Mind of God who's not in time. Can you say amen? Now, now you're going to understand the marriage and spirituality I'm talking about. There are foolish women that can become wise only because of Mary. Mm. Before marriage, she have no order. Once she gets married, you don't understand. Now, because the intelligence, the mind, the headship is now determining her footsteps. And you know what I'm talking about. Sisters without order, brother. They just do everything anyhow. But once they get married, you start to admire her. See, this woman, there's something about her. What has changed? She has received the head. Oh, brother, we are all foolish in the world until he came. If he did not come, I was not going to be here. I was going to say, you are blessed. All things are possible. All, you, you can have money. You, I'll be doing like what they're doing out there. Like a headless chicken. I'll preach out of season. What we need today, friends, is not motivational speech. Motivational speech is not going to stop Putin from attacking Ukraine. Motivational speech won't take away fear 
from the hearts of men what the church needs is a real God in their midst. Not motivational speech. Courage must be from within. Not courage from the outside. Encourage yourself in the Lord, in the word. Then you can stand any test of time. If you have met with God, you can face anything in this life. If you have met with God, the ones that met with Paul, the ones that met with William Branham, if you have met with him face to face, you can confront anything in this life. But if you have not met with God, you are presumptuous. You are moving from pillar to post. You are opportunistic. You only move when you see things that they may work. You cannot move against pressure, friction. You, you, you're just looking at circumstances. Now, if you operate like that, you can't make it in the rapture. There are places where the going gets rough, but you still have to move forward. There are places where there's no hope, but you still have to go forward. There are places where you'll be discouraged, but you still need to stand on your feet. There are places where nobody agrees with you, but you need to stand by your conviction. That's what we are talking about about. There is no diplomacy in God. There is truth. Diplomacy is following the wave. If the wind blows there, you blow there. If it blows there, you blow there. So everybody is happy with you. If you want everyone to agree with you, you are going to disagree with God. Amen. That's why Judas must be there. I'm sorry to say this, you know. But I can't expect to be loved by everyone. If I'm loved by everyone, it means I'm becoming denominational. The places I'm going to tell you what you don't want to hear. Yes. The places I'm going to tell you a truth that is going to hurt you. So I, I cannot live to please all men. But I must stand by the truth. And the truth will make you free. <laughs> If you get angry, it's okay to be angry. But when you are fine, catch up with us. Yes, it's okay to be angry. There's nothing wrong. As long as you don't kill yourself. It's okay to be angry. But after you're angry, say, Lord, give me strength to fulfill your word. Then you catch up. Amen. All right. Marriage and spirituality. They're intertwined, these things. Eh? So you see what Brother Branham says. It's the chronological age. So you see our age is connected to the revelation we have about what we have believed. That's what qualifies you to be an elder. Not age, but wisdom, experience, and maturity. You are you are clothed with the cloud. So imagine a family where Christ is the head of the men and the men the head of the wife. What kind of a marriage would that be? It is wisdom, experience, and maturity. So why are you so happy all the time? Not about me. <clears throat> he says, But no, okay, he's more seasoned, trained, not a novice, reliable because experience, because of experience and long-standing proof of his Christian experience. But no, the bishop did not stick to the epistles of Paul. But rather, they went to Paul's account of the time he called the elders 
from Ephesus to Miletus in Acts 20. Acts 20. In, in verse 17, it rec- the record states, elders were called, and then in verse 28, they are called overseers, bishops. And these bishops, no doubt, political-minded and anxious for power, insisted that Paul had given the meaning that overseers were more than the local elder. Okay, in verse 17, it, re- it states elders were called, and then in verse 28, they were called overseers, bishops. And these bishops, no doubt, political minded and anxious for power, insisted that Paul had given them the meaning that overseers were more than the local elder with official capacity only in his own church. You see? To them, a bishop was now one with extended authority over many local elders. Such a concept, yet even a man of the stage of Polycarp leaned towards such organization. That's that which started as a deed in the first age was made a literal doctrine. So it is today. Bishops will still claim to control men and deal with them as they desire, placing them where they so will in the ministry. Now, this denies the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost who said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work where unto I have called them. So now he's talking about people who are Men called, not God called. To say, you, I want you to pastor here. You, I want you to pastor there. It's not like a person is a burden for the people. They are positioned by men to serve God. So you see it. You always feel indebted that a man did me a favor, so you always go back to that man. This is what was happening, isn't it? Is it? This denies, okay, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, right? Yes. He said, this is anti word and anti Christ. Matthew 20, verse 25 to 28. Matthew 20, verse 25 to 28. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. And they, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. You see, Nicolaitism, a one man's ministry that is not connected to divine authority. What is the pastor saying today? Marriage and spirituality. There are some principles. As we look at the world, America is married to Rome. Is that right? Church and politics are married together. And the bride in Christ, they're in an invisible union. And the influences of 
two beasts. Rome Roma. and America. Na America. Two beasts. It's influencing the marriages of the people under that system. Are we together? Church and politics in a home. Married together. Baalism. From Nicolaitism, Baalism. Jezebelism, conquering. Dominating females. And the marriage between Christ and the bride. The invisible union. Is influencing the marriages. Of the people that are under that authority. So as we speak right now. These are the two forces that are influencing the world. One is wisdom, experience, and maturity because they've received him. And the others, they've got the Nicolaitism, Baalism, and Jezebelism because they're under America and Rome. Jezebel and Ahab. Marriage and spirituality. May the Lord bless you as the musicians come. Praise be to God. How many can see the picture today? Praise God. God help us. Eh? God teach us to come to truth and honesty. You know, there's power in truth. Truth makes you conscious. Hypocrisy makes you sleep and slumber. And you wake up and find out you know, certain things have happened. But if you're a truthful person, you see things clearly. Because you're not living to please men. You're expressing what is inside of you. And that's how you want to walk in life. Marriage. Work everything. You must just be a truthful person. If you are fired because of the truth, why not? If you lose a marriage because of truth, why not? Anything that breaks because of truth is worth breaking. You don't need to fight for anything that dilapidates because of the truth. If it's a friendship, if it's broken by truth, let that friendship fall down. If you defend it, it will eat you up tomorrow because you are bringing hypocrisy to support a broken pillar. It's only truth that can make things stand. And if you remove truth, it's just a matter of time. You see that it's sinking sand. Let God give us grace in this hour. Brother Branham says, I don't think this is talking about marriage. It's a prophecy for the church in the last day. Watch. Ab and Jezebel, their marriage is exactly like the marriages of the people that they're influencing. Exactly. Exactly. There's something spiritual about it. God gave us grace. We want to take a song. You know, maybe as I pray with you as well, I think your only hope is clear. What is that hope? Is to receive him that came with one foot upon the land and another upon the sea. He that came with an open book. If you have him in your home, you are going to run your home above what any man ever thought. Some has visited psychologists marriage counselors they've tried so many things to find peace in their home that's not how you're going to get the peace true peace will come through here 
if your husband is under the headship of the cloud, if the mind that was in Christ is in him, you know how to treat you. And that man, the way he treats you is how you're going to treat his children. Then your home will be a perfect home by the grace of God. Wisdom, experience, and maturity in judgment. Not old age, but Christ in you, the hope of glory. To give another hand of praise. Lord, I cry for humility. How many say that today? We want to sing this song as a prayer before I pray with you.
ship now I will of the word by his spirit and I believe his spirit is here if you can only admit your guilt and accept your wrong and ask for grace to humble yourself under the word I believe that I believe God is conditioning his people for the final quickening unto the rapture. Refuse to walk under an illusion if your marriage is not adding up. Don't try to patch it up using lies. Don't try to patch it up trying to be strong. If you are sinking, cry out! Say, Lord, my marriage is sinking. I know I'm older. But I need help, Lord. My husband, my wife, do not perish because of pride. God is giving you a platform to reconsider your ways and accept his provided way. If you are here, you need his ability to say, Lord, I've been using my psychologist's way of doing things. I've been to many marriage counselors and I'm using their principles but you are the author of marriage you are the first marriage officer oh I need wisdom from above like your son Solomon, Solomon. He, 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 was, he was young but he asked for wisdom and he was able to rule the people not by his wisdom but the wisdom of God despite his age you are saying Lord I need the same wisdom experience and maturity in my marriage the Bible says if any man seeketh wisdom let him ask of the Lord who give and sparingly or oh, he is more than able to give wisdom to give understanding he wants to help if you can admit that you need him as a young man as a young girl you want to make a decision say Lord I am confused but I know you are not you know me better than I know myself you understand the future more than I can see I need your hand in the decision I'm about to make before I say yes to this man be it unto me according to your word guide me. Before I go to that sister, let it be you, Lord. God wants to help. 
But some of the tools, married people. But we are not single people. But we are not whatever stage of life you at. We are not watching much of the church. We are receive grace from the presence of Almighty God. We are not going to He's going to translate his relationship with this bride into your life, your family, if thou can believe, with our heads bowed. Praise God. Open your heart. Young and old. Move away from your feelings. Take a leap of faith into the will of God. Relinquish your emotions. Embrace grace. Despise your own achievements. Surrender to the simplicity of Almighty God. Cry out. Prepare me, Lord. Prepare me for the hour that lays ahead. Equip me, King. Equip me with the knowledge that I will require to make it through. Establish me, Father. Establish me upon the present truth that I can represent you right. Take away all that is not of thee. I'm tired of living my own life. I want your life in me. I'm tired of going in circles. Break the cycle of confusion. Break the cycle of failure. Break the cycle of wickedness. Breathe upon my heart as you brooded upon the earth. Quicken the gem of life locked inside of my soul. I want more of you. I want another touch. I need restoration. I need re-establishment of oneness. I need faith. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace that transcends through storms. Peace that can push the enemy back. Peace from the Lord. He is there to usher in his will to every believing son or daughter. He is there to pour of his spirit to every man and woman that is ready. He is there to change stories of all whose pasts are condemning them. Past filled with failures. Past filled with condemnation. He is here today to rewrite your story. Open your heart and allow the spirit of truth to enter in. The spirit of liberty to step in. Allow Elohim to brood in your earth. Awaken the potentials that are laying dormant. The potentials that are expressible in your life. Give him access in your marriage access to your children give him access in your circumstances he is waiting on you to let go and let God he 
if you are a witness tonight. I want you to experience the supernatural in your life. Maybe for the first time today, you have read about God. You sang about Him. You've heard Him being preached. But you have never come to a place of experiencing Him as an individual. I want to say today is your day. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. As I stand, the same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel all the way to Canaan, that intercepted Paul on his way to Damascus, that walked with William Branham throughout his earthly pilgrimage, is present in 2022. He says, do you want to take a walk with me? Bride of Christ. When the world is confused because of a blizzard of war threatening lives of many, do you want to take a walk with me? Seeing on the God that calmed the sea in the time of Jesus, I'm the one that dismissed the storm in the time of William Branham. The same yesterday, today and forever. I can bring a calm in your life. Humble yourself. Gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you because you are God and you are concerned about our well-being. You come and speak beyond my better judgment because of your concern over these people that are in this building. Dear Lord, what can I say? We are amazed. We are amazed. And as we stand in awe, we receive all spiritual blessings in heavenly places through Christ our Lord. As we have declared our stand like Mary, be it unto us according to thy word. Thy word is life. Thy word is truth. Thy word is hope. Thy word is courage and overcoming grace. Precious Lord, I pray for every heart, every life surrendered to you at this junction of time. Many may never have, have had an experience with you. They only hear about it, read about it, and imagine it. But may you change their imaginations and turn it to a reality even now. May they experience a touch from on high. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the Holy Ghost may be released upon every man and woman, upon every expecting believer, upon every surrendered heart. Grant, I pray, the spirit of truth, wisdom, we want experience and maturity. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this blessed day, for your blessed touch. Thank you for our families, our parents, our children, our loved ones. Thank you for marriage and spirituality. 
thank you for the influence that goes above Jezebel and Ahab. Thank you. our prayers. Thank you for hearing our cry. We ask it in your name. And everybody say Amen. Let's give him a hand of praise. Amen and Amen. You can do better than that, friends. We're going to meet again on Tuesday by the grace of God. We want to take a song as we are going to be dismissing. How many love the Lord? How many appreciate Him? And how many were blessed? Let's give another hand of praise. We're going to have uh, baptism after this by the grace of God and your program is after service how are you doing it alright come again alright let's rise to it fly so high how is it I'm seeing you're discussing alright we have been in an eagle age. How many can say we've been born in an eagle age? Let's put our hands together. We have been born in an eagle age by an eagle prophet's message to manifest the living word for a day. We have been given wings to fly Way up in the sky Where no other bird can fly To live in a heavenly atmosphere To fly where only eagles dare Let's fly Oh uh-huh.
such a word. Uh, now we are starting with another segment. Amen. Um, as you can see that everything is getting there by the grace of God. Amen. Um, 
You know, friends, uh, it doesn't get bigger than this in our local assembly as for celebrations of anniversaries. Amen. Uh, we are so happy now as we... I think there are a lot of songs. The musicians are ready. Everything is, is ready. Amen. Now, uh, now what we are going to do can the musician give us an uh, appetite now? Uh, which one are we starting with? Let's allow them to choose. Amen. I'm gonna love you. 
take our seats as we take our seats yeah, this is so good amen how many you see that these are so beautiful are we together hey i'm so happy words fail me amen i feel like i can be using chivenda so that i can express how happy i am it is it is not easy to be uh, driving this program because you will end up saying on your behalf <laughs> praise god now uh, as they are still seated the musician may you give us that song which says vakate ki se hosi vakate ki se hosi amen let's clap hands for them as they are preparing vakate ki se hosi Oh, they are saying I can be talking. Um, what I can say is that let us be enjoying ourselves. This is our anniversary also. Amen. Uh, it's not the anniversary of the pastor only and mama. Since uh, we are the wife also. Amen. So wherever you are, just feel special eh? may God bless you
Praise God. Amen. As you are seated, we are going to call some few people to come and say something on this day. Amen. Since it's their day, I request that let's use maybe some few minutes, one minute, two or three or four or five. Praise God. Now we are going to call a church representative uh, out there. Praise God. Uh, as you know, in, uh, when we have weddings, the church representative will be there. Yeah, so we are going to call one also. But this time around, we'll ask that uh, he, he must tell us uh, uh, we already know what they believe. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. Now, church representative can come forth. Let's clap hands for them. Amen. Yeah, I'm very happy today. Um, as the church representative, uh, Pastor, I would like to say I'm very happy. Yes, for this day. It's a unique day. It's a very special day. And uh, our desire, our prayers, is that God continues to guide you, to bless you, and even to continue working with you. And truly, our marriages are sweet. Because we have got a very good example. We learn a lot from you. Amen. Praise God. As we clap hands for him as he's going to sit down. Without wasting any time, we are going to call uh, the son and the daughter. Let's start with the son. Uh, any son on the ground can just come and <laughs> and then after we'll have a daughter let's clap hands for the son as the son is coming The son, we don't have a specific son which was written down. Amen. Uh, we are all sons. Amen. And daughters. Amen. So they are our parents. Now we are requesting one from the brothers and one from the sisters can just come and say a word, a word or two before we go to, uh, to, to before we eat our cake. Amen. Let's clap hands for them as they are coming. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm standing here as a son of uh, the father and the mother. I'm so thankful for, the, for this day. Our pastor and mama, we, are, uh, we wish you well. May God bless you and guide you. That he may always use you to uh, preach to us, to show us the way. Because now, we are what we are because of them. That is why we are so thankful. May God bless them. And give uh, them their heart's desires. Amen. Amen. As we are, as the daughter is coming.
more like what is she going to talk about? <laughs> I only came here yesterday. But I'm grateful for this opportunity. I've known uh, Pastor Mtasa and Sister Mtasa for a very few months. But when, where there is love, you don't need a year, you don't need two, you don't need three to see love. Where there is a teaching of the word, you don't need the whole year. I'm grateful to be joining this tabernacle to be to fellowship here. I wish you well. For, from the little I've known about you, I've heard about you, and from my interaction with you, I've seen the grace of God. May God continue blessing you as you are blessed, blessed as you are. The attacks are very big. Continue praying. Continue focusing on the Lord. Everything of the world will come to an end. But the Lord will be there forever. So I wish you well. Before I go and sit down, sorry, I'm a disciplinarian. Some people, you just have to live with them. These two, these two people are no longer true. Whenever you are organizing, there must be two extra chairs. Can someone please assist? Those two people must grow knowing and seeing things happening. Can they join the parents? Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. We are so thankful. Uh, now we are getting closer to the end. Now, uh, uh, before we can uh, go to, 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 to the pastor and mama, let me just remind you something. Uh, the way this to live, we, you you see some uh, the pastor's life in the pastor and the pastor's life in the in mama. So it is easy if a person is not saved to copy them. And then you want you want to do exactly what they do. Amen. What I'm trying to say, I'm just putting a ground to tell you a story. The, the, uh, I, I, one day I visited them with my wife uh, on the table and then uh, the pastor will take the meat and put to mama's uh, plate and then uh, as time goes on uh, actually, to, to just simplify it, Ma mama, mama will put more meat in Didi's plate. As time goes on, Didi will take the meat back. Amen. Now, so one day my wife put a lot of meat in my plate. <laughs> I didn't return. <laughs> no. <what? laughs> All right. Uh, God bless you. What I'm trying to say <laughs> is that the way this the, the way these two live, <laughs> you can just try to. You, you know, it is easy to. Ju you could just want to copy everything. <laughs> and there are things that I would want my wife to also do. Amen. Now, I, I, I'm just trying to say these two, they are a sheaf that is waved before us. That each and every home must look unto them. Amen. But that one of meat, I was just passing there. Amen. <laughs> now, uh, we are going to request a song as we are going to, to cut the cake. And they are going to give us a song. Uh, which song can they give us? The power of true love. Amen. Yeah, let's give let them give us the power of true love. 
as they will be standing up to prepare the uh, the cake cutting amen Amen. This is so good. Uh, this is a chocolate cake. As a cake in one ali. That is not an ordinary cake. Praise be to God. Now without wasting any time we are going to get a response. From mama and daddy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, these are very awkward circumstances. Eh? Yeah, I normally stand uh, preaching and uh, advising. No, but I want to take this uh, opportunity to appreciate you all. Um, it's a great thing. Um, words cannot express our gratitude to be entrusted with you, you know, in this earthly journey that I walk as your shepherd. It's not a small thing. And I don't take it for granted. And each time I always ask God that I can be, you know, a better pastor you know, to fulfill his purpose and uh, guide you, you know, in the path that after all is said and done, when we meet on the other side, you know, you say, God bless you. You showed us the way without compromising. So I appreciate your efforts, your love, and this which you have planned. Like I said, you know, uh, it's almost like the. You see the way we are looking. Eh? It's the media team that dressed us. Eh? No, let's clap hands for that. So I was telling them that I'm very grateful. That you know, so I was telling them that I'm very grateful. They kept on saying, really? Really? You know, the heart from which this comes from speaks volumes. And that's why it also resonates to what is within us. And I want to take this opportunity as well to appreciate my lovely wife. Um, 
You know, I've been speaking a lot about her. But I'll just give you a testimony of somebody else. Um, they say to me, um, you, there's a time you'd speak a lot about mom, my wife. A lot. And then in my mind, I would always say, no, these things cannot be real. There is exaggeration. Whatever this, you know, that the pastor always speaks about. I mean, there can't be a person who does that and who lives like that. So, in the process of time, the same person came and stayed with us full time at home. Then later on, they came and confessed and said, You know, I used to think you are exaggerating. But what I've seen in her is more than you had even spoken. So I will repeat again. If I'm given another chance to marry again, I'll still marry Sister Kulufelo. By the grace of God. Amen. And um, the places we have passed together, the challenges, because at times people they only see the good part but they don't realize that certain things they pass through certain trials for them to be what they are so we would lie if we say it was easy for us to be together. It was not easy. But we thank God for strengthening us. I also thank God for a background. How God raised her from her home. You know, with my in-laws and all. It was my in-laws. Alright, it was a way you know, just to prepare him maybe for a person like me. So I feel blessed to be six years in marriage with her. And, uh, I'll say God bless her with our little kids. You know, like the sister said, it was going to be wonderful if they were here as well. But, but I know they'll be touching the cake, you know. <laughs> so the deacons were trying to avoid that. But we are really thankful. I'm, I'm really thankful for my family, my kids, my wife, and everybody else. As the brother said, you're part of the family. And uh, preaching wise, I think this will be my 13th year with you. Is that right? 13. Yeah. yeah, it's about 13 years now. So it's, it's a joy, I mean, to have worked with you this much. I wouldn't want to stand and say I've got headaches because of believers. What I've noticed is the nature that my wife has. It is the same nature that I see in you. The humility, you know, the respect. I, I see the same and I cannot, you know, you know, visualize the difference. When I'm talking to her, I understand you better. And when I talk to you, I understand her better. Because the progression, I don't know how God has just made it. It's more or less the same. And for that reason, Thank you. As I give her time to say something. By the grace of God. God bless you. Shalom. I want to greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. I do have a lot to say, but I won't say a lot, but I have a lot to say. So, uh, firstly, like uh, my husband said, we are very thankful for this you are doing for us. It's really much, uh, we really appreciate because it really enters the heart. The thought of it, um, the, uh, you dressed us, everything that you, you are doing for us is very wonderful. And uh, 
thank God for people like you, children. We really appreciate everything about you. Uh, um, I'm not very good like <laughs> to talk, like, but if I was not here, I was, if I was somewhere, I was going to be able to say everything in th- that is in my heart. But, you know, I'm so happy and I may God bless you, everyone. everyone. God bless you so much. And God keep you and also bless you like you are blessing us in your whatever you need whatsoever. And also I want to just uh, tell you as well that you know, I, this journey has been a wonderful journey. And I appreciate the Lord that he has blessed me in this journey with my husband, the pastor. So it's just a blessing and uh, like he said, uh, some, each and everything is there, but you know, we see God in everything. He just help us in every way and we appreciate him so much. He's the leader in everything. So I just want to also confirm that if ever I have to choose again, I'll choose him too. I will change. So, yeah, and I uh, just want to tell you that I love you and uh, I appreciate God for you and I appreciate you for being a good husband and may God continue to strengthen you in this journey we really appreciate you so much we really love you together with the ones that we that are sleeping or outside <laughs> so we love you so much thank you thank you Let's clap hands for them again. Hey, such sweet words. Amen. To the church and to Mama. Amen. We are so happy. Um, we have reached the end. I will ask Brother Nichunda to close. Uh, before you can close, I want to confirm something. That when you see us, when you see our families, when we see us working with uh, 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 our children, it's because of these two. Amen. Because God is using them in our generation. Amen. Because... Uh, let me also give you a tip. Let's say you are down or something is not going well. You can just call the pastor. You know what he will say? Hello, brother Doc. Hello, brother Doc. All my troubles will be gone. <laughs> Amen. So that's that's how that, that's what God did to our generation. Amen. He gave us people that he could talk to us through. Amen. May God bless you. Uh, Brother Nichunda, before you can close, after when he's done closing, we'll stand up and get a dismissal song as we allow them to go first. Amen. He can close, then after, then we'll get a song. Let's pray. Mighty Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, dear Lord, for this anniversary, Lord, for our beloved pastor and the family. We are so thankful, Lord, that you have expressed them into time in this last age. Dear Father, to be an example unto us, even in this local assembly. We are so thankful, dear Lord, for the experiences that you have given unto them. We know, Lord, they were not only directed unto them, but they were for us to benefit. We are so thankful, dear Lord, for the word that we receive here 
in this local assembly the food that your servant, O God, always give unto us. Mighty Lord, we believe they are the ones that you have ordained to take us through even unto the translation. We pray, Lord, that may you bless them in every facet of their life. Lord, I pray as I commend everything unto the incapable hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Can give us a song as we stand up together. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, He keeps on doing great things. Jehovah Jireh. Sorry, I didn't uh, mention how, which song and how. Amen. Uh, you can give us, God brought us, uh, what does it say? God brought me to you. And then after, then we'll get a dismissal song. Now this is for the pastor and mama as they will be going out. And after, the song leader will come. Missal song till we meet again. God richly bless you. Give us that key. G. <laughs> 
He keeps on doing great things. Hallelujah. He keeps on doing great things. My Lord, He keeps on doing great things. Hallelujah. He keeps on. Thank you. 
Wow.